plug this laptop in? Oh, maybe, who knows what's, what's squeaking there? Your transmitter. I don't know. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> I got. I got to tell you. I got. I got. My family is the whole reason that I get to do this stuff. Uh, they have heart and soul, sweat and blood, put every single thing that we have as collected into doing this work. Uh, my father and my son and my daughter piled into a truck and drove 36 hours to get here. And when they were driving down the interstate, our uh, our suspension rig for the quarter scale model over here. Uh, one of the hooks came loose and smashed the nose into the into the trailer. And their hearts are on the floor. They're thinking it's all dead. They're trying to go to the hardware store, get stuff to patch it back together. They're sleeping in the tent by the airplane at night. And, oh my goodness. Uh, it's just that kind of story day in and day out, year after year. Um, this presentation, by the way, is, is uh, one I've used before. My daughter, Kelsey, is an aspiring graphic designer as well. She had a nice presentation already for me. I didn't have time to use it, so I owe my family more than I could ever, ever express. Uh, pressure thrust. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got to get back to weight commercial propulsion. The kind of thing you need on the back of an airplane is a fan. It needs to have a lot of blades. It needs to have a small diameter. It needs to have a lot of hitch. That's a nutshell synopsis of what needs to be pushing our planes through the air. It's extremely efficient. But it, instead of having something like that behind a body that doesn't seem to care about the inflow field, we need to make sure that the body is a natural laminar flow body and that we put the fan behind, significantly behind the point of transition. And that we use good inflow designs so that we don't make that impeller fly in a terrible, terrible environment for making thrust. The weight of our propulsion delivers the goods. It's at least a 20% improvement in, in efficiency over a standard config tracker configuration if it's done it correctly. The next point kind of conflicts with wake immersed propulsion and that is that um, um, pressure thrust as Goldschmidt e evaluated is a way that you cause the air that you parted with your body to collapse back on the aft body powerfully so as to restore the energy that was uh, lost in expanding that volume of air. Now, I don't know why after 50 years we still don't really understand or utilize this concept. It is not rocket science. Uh, it's pretty simple physics, but we don't have any proof, we don't have any flying concepts that are out there making this commercially viable thing so we can pour the money and the dollars into it about refining and optimizing it. Pressure thrust is, is a, something we'll get into in very detail here. Non-planar span efficiency. That's what Synergy shows, you know, we've got a different configuration here, just in case no one, uh, or someone doesn't understand uh, the difference between Synergy and a box wing. Box wings are non-planar and they have low induced drag. Synergy is a double box tail. The upper flight surfaces are tails and they are not lifting in normal flight, they are pushing down. So just to make sure you understand that this would be a possible flight condition. Okay, very high angle of attack. That's the normal condition as we're pushing down, we're uh, acting by throwing air upwards, and I'll just elaborate on that in a minute. Uh, open thermodynamics is really the same thing as powered boundary area control. It means using engine power and fuel and heat in ways that change the dynamics of our calculations. When I talk about synergy to folks, folks that um, are heavily reliant on the textbook mathematics, heavily reliant on CFD and spreadsheets and other programs to deliver a preliminary evaluation of an aircraft design, I have to tell them, look, you've got to get under the hood. Look at what your calculations are actually showing and telling you. Some of what they're telling you is only true 95% of the time. And when it's not true, it changes everything. So we're still in search of a better fluid dynamic uh, calculation uh, paradigm in a program that will do it right all the time and do it in real time. I've got a couple ideas about that. And hopefully, we'll get to them. The last point is optimum volumetric displacement. That's subsonic area ruling. 
That means that we don't, you know, we're not going supersonic here, but we're going to treat the design of the airplane as if we were. We're going to gently disturb the air, not disturb it with pulses, not disturb it with a, a huge variance in our in the cross-sectional area that we present to the plane, to the atmosphere. So the problem we have here is that uh, these things are hard to combine. And science doesn't like me for combining them all at once because how are we going to know what's really responsible for the results? You're supposed to change one thing at a time and have a nice control. And the only problem with that is it would take another 150 years and we don't have it. Uh, we don't need complicated solutions and root goldbergs. What we need is something that is sellable that you want to fly and that works. It's got to combine all of these things together and it's got to do them in a way that is economical, easy to use, and it delivers a solution for the general public. The general public is afraid to climb into your airplane. And they don't really like the experience when they do. Who wants to sit inside of a tin can with uh, headphones on, bouncing around? What we really need is an airplane that can fly at high altitude, and get swiftly cross country, directly point to point, and that will help fix the uh, broken hub and spoke transportation system. Okay, so that's why we're doing this. Um, it, it's been beyond our means, but it hasn't stopped us. We're going to keep right on going. The double box tail configuration uh, gives stability and control through induced drag reduction. And it uses a neat mechanism for that. Instead of being a box wing, like uh, a lot of other airplanes that have been relatively unsuccessful are, it uses, again, a, a double box tail. And so whereas almost everything that has been uh, populated out there in the design space about box wing designs has been commercially unsuccessful and or semi-dangerous, Synergy is inherently stable. In fact, that's one of the things that's most striking about it. It's solid as a rock. It also has some interesting attributes in, in its flight. When you turn, let me see if I can illustrate this. Looks like we're going to make a left turn here. Okay, it has a rather radical <laughs> roll rate. Uh, if you have that much deflection, which you don't. But it, let's say you have that much, a little bit of uh, deflection less than what you see there. What happens is, is this is making a little more drag, and this is making a little less. And that's the opposite of what you'd have with a, a regular airplane. So instead of having an adverse yaw condition and the need to coordinate rudders when you turn, it has a proverse yaw condition, and it carves the sky. It just basically rolls, and the horizon stays level, and, and you pull as many Gs as you like. So the, the way that this uh, manages weight vortex is we use large surfaces. You take little fingers or little winglets or little something or other and you put it on your wingtip, you can't expect to control large-scale effects. There's a lot of energy that's thrown by your airplane at the ground. The air is uh, thrown at the ground by your wing very effectively, very efficiently. And when you move 3,000 pounds of air toward the ground very rapidly, you're not going to control it with a little fingertip on the wing. So the way the winglets get more efficient is they get taller. And you can go as tall as you like. Just keep right on going. But there's a point at which structurally that doesn't make any sense anymore. So a, uh, a winglet tends not to get very tall, and we learn quickly that it's not as good as, as increasing the wingspan. So instead of adding a, a lot of taller vertical surfaces to our airplanes, we say, oh, it's better just to increase the wingspan if you can get away with it. But Synergy says, okay, we're going to come up here and we're going to throw some air sideways with the winglet and we're going to throw some air upwards with the elevon and we're going to use that physics to reduce our induced drag. The air has already been disturbed anyway. We're not trying to violate any laws of physics. You don't get something for nothing, but when you have air that's already been thrown at the ground and you're acting against it, you get your stability and control for freedom. The zero trim drag component is possible using approaches like this. I don't know if we've got that or not, but we'll find out.
Here's another way of seeing it. Uh, physics of a wave and physics of wave vortex are quite different, but at least you can see that, right? The air is curling around and it's crashing down on our upper flight surfaces. And we're acting against it preemptively, throwing air the opposite direction. It makes for a strong, uh, stiff, lightweight wing because we're pushing down on the weight head instead of lifting up. behind the wing at the tip, back to generating substantial down force. Mm -hmm. Very high amount of it, as a matter of fact. And that's because we get to act against the wave vortex that comes off the tip of the wing. So we're acting against with the third air force, not just the wing, but the, the upper surface as well. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit from an interview that was uh, done at the Cafe Foundation at the Electric Aircraft March. There's uh, more to that and it's available online if you can do it on YouTube or something. So let's talk about the ingredient technologies in a little more detail. Natural laminar flow gets you half the drag of a tur turbulent flow airplane. Uh, we're not doing it very much on fuselages, but we'd like to do more. We're doing it pretty well on wings, making a difference. But the next step beyond natural laminar flow is to use power drag control. And the experiments of the past haven't been very promising because of the way that they were executed. Instead of having a massively complicated uh, million hole uh, electron drill boundary layer control system, it's just not that complicated, folks. If you put holes in the back of your wings and drag a lot of enough air through it, you'll basically achieve what August Rasput achieved, which is huge increases in maximum lift coefficient and huge decreases in drag. Uh, so it's a, it's a mass flow problem. The experiments in the literature were all about, can we do this at supersonic speed on jet fighters? Can we do it uh, at near transonic velocity on commercial airliners and so on? Its real application is, is most suited for the general aviation environment. So we've got an example of, um, uh, we put together a little bit of a wing section so people can see how we're actually going to do that on, uh, on the synergy design. So we use small scale structures to manage viscosity on the small scale. And again, the airplane is sticking, the air is sticking to your airplane. So we need to take that air that's stuck, drag it into the plane, and spit it back out. And it's simple to do that. Um, lower is pretty efficient. You, for a six horsepower uh, lower, you can achieve the same performance results as a hundred horsepower thrust in. And that's open thermodynamics. So let's return to this illustration. The key to understanding how to fly with a heavier than air airplane is to manage the viscosity of the air. Ketchup is a familiar viscous medium. So you probably shouldn't be able to clean this up like this. But you can. called Swill. It's an industrial robot tool developed in Japan. And all it is is a plate. The plate goes out, but the skin that's wrapped around the plate like a treadmill is fixed on one end and spring loaded on the other. And the result is that the surface that's next to the object that you're touching doesn't move. It's a minimum of centrifuge at all. There you go, it disappeared. See, it is magic. 